Well, I'm not sure what I did especially right this time, but uh, this particular uh, run of uh, nitric acid synthesis, I seem to have gotten a much better yield, even though I started with the same amount of reactants. I'm not sure what's going on. Now, I am running it a little longer than I did before, but I, I'm not getting much more over. I mean, it's just a drop every few seconds. Um, so I don't know. I don't know why I'm doing so much better this time. Um, I do have the the top of the flask and the beginning of the condenser over here better insulated than before because I could see I was just refluxing a lot up there and the, the vapor was condensing up in here and running right back down into the flask so I thought well if I could just uh, keep the top of the the thermometer section up here warmer the vapor might go directly into the condenser and condense so that might be what's going on um, foam over yeah um, you know maybe it's not my crappy um, hot plate that's the problem because the exact same thing happened as last time that the, the reaction was going along nicely nice and sedate vigorous but not out of control and um, just everything was wonderful and then all of a sudden just in the blink of an eye it's, it got up to where it wanted to foam over and I had to turn the heat off and really hope it didn't get up to where it was foaming into the uh, into the condenser and it, it, it fortunately it didn't but this seems to just be a uh, a property of this reaction it'll go along nice and sedately for a while and then uh, something will happen and it'll get kicked into high gear so I, I don't know I don't know what's going on but I think I've definitely got a better yield this time than last time I'll measure it once I shut this down I'm getting close to getting ready to call it and shut it down so it can start cooling off the drops aren't coming that frequently anymore yeah so it's, it's taking a while. But uh, I don't know, I definitely got something right. And I, what I want to do in the future is if I can find some hose that's halfway resistant to nitrogen dioxide gas, I want to capture the gas that's coming out of here and dilute it or, or dissolve it in uh, some distilled water to make dilute nitric acid. Because I can use dilute nitric acid too. Um, but I need some hose that won't immediately fall apart from the nitrogen dioxide and I, I'll need a, uh, a vacuum trap so that uh, I don't suck water back in and, and dilute my uh, nice concentrated product there once I uh, turn the system off and things start cooling down so I'll need a water trap of some kind that's that's an improvement for another day though I'm just just happy I've got a another good Another good run of nitric acid. It looks like better than last time. Okay, I've shut it down. Um, it's starting to cool off. And pretty happy with the amount of uh, nitric acid I've got. I set a fan over here. Not uh, so much to cool the receiving flask, although maybe, maybe that had an effect. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, the main reason I put it there was to blow the nitrogen dioxide gas coming out of here away and out of my face when I was working over here. So that worked eh, reasonably well, depending on which way the wind is blowing. Now, I want to show you something here. Hopefully it shows up on the camera. Focus. That joint is full to overflowing with liquid nitric acid. In fact, it ran out on the cat clip and destroyed the cat clip. So there's another cat clip down. And over here, now the fumes are getting to this one too. This one looks like it's on its way out. This one up here is all bleached almost white, but it's still holding together. So, you know, even if I ruin a few cat clips on each run, you know, they're dirt cheap. It's still a lot cheaper than buying nitric acid. I bought a, I bought a bunch of cat clips off of uh, Amazon really, really cheap. But uh, since these joints are full of nitric acid, I'm going to have to be really, really careful when I disassemble this. I'm going to have to get my PPE on because I, that nitric acid could go flying everywhere, including in my eyes, on my, on my face, on my shirt, whatever. So I better gear up. This could get dangerous. Also, when I disassemble that joint, it's going to drip down here. 
so yeah and I wouldn't be surprised if yeah there's some liquid in these other joints too especially once these upper ones cool down a little bit and it starts condensing in them yeah I actually got a pretty bad burn for the nitric acid last time when I disassembled it somewhere up here when I was taking the, the condenser off somehow a drop of it hit my skin and I didn't feel it at first but boy I felt it after a minute or so and uh, it's been about a week and it's still pretty nasty looking so I'm definitely gonna gear up I've got some uh, some leather gloves I'm gonna wear because uh, we all know what happens when concentrated nitric acid and nitrile gloves mix. So here's a classic test. I've got a, uh, a nitrile glove here and I'm just gonna put a little of this acid on it and we'll see what happens. Oh yeah, that is some concentrated nitric acid. This is why they say you should not wear gloves when working with nitric acid. Pyrotechnics. So I'll wear leather gloves. I need to get some vinyl gloves to wear over the leather because the, uh, the vinyl doesn't seem to be affected by the nitric acid too badly. And I know it'll soak through the leather eventually and get to my skin. So, But the leather's better than nothing. I'll have a big face shield on and a leather apron and uh, hopefully I can uh, get this all apart and cleaned without uh, further injuries. We'll see. And um, once this is cooled down and there's no more drips coming through and not a bunch of gas coming through, it looks like, about, looks like the drips are about over, I will uh, pull this uh, receiving flask off and uh, dump it into a beaker and see how much we got. It looks like we got a lot more than last time. Oh, and one more thing. I think I have solved my problem with the uh, the O-rings going bad up here where the thermometer enters the glassware. I've wrapped a bunch of uh, Teflon tape around the thermometer to prevent it from falling in, and that seems to work pretty good. It it semi-seals things up there so that the, uh, the vapors can't get out, and it prevents the thermometer from falling down in. It, it seems to be working pretty good, and the nitric acid doesn't seem to be touching the Teflon tape, so... That seems to be a workable solution. All right, so things have cooled down a lot. There's still a little refluxing going on in the boiling flask. Put the oil bath down to 70 C. So it's, it's cooling off quite a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna gear up. I got my leather gloves, my leather apron, and my face shield over here. I'm gonna gear up and get this fan out of the way. I've got a... Uh, plastic tub full of water and uh, baking soda here. I'm going to slide this over underneath this joint right here and I'm going to start disassembling things. I'm going to dump this glassware right in the right in the tub and any anything that drips out hopefully will go in the tub and get neutralized. I'm going to take the uh, receiving flask aside so I can uh, measure the volume in it, dilute it and transfer it to my acid bottle over here and then uh, slowly disassemble the rest of it and try not to get any of it on me like last time. Don't need any more nitric acid burns. So I'm gonna put the phone away and concentrate on doing this right with both hands and no distractions and see if I can get through it with no, uh, no injuries. I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, disassembly of the apparatus went without any real incidents or additional injuries, which is nice. Okay, there were no injuries to me, but the gloves took a bit of a beating. You can see where I got a few uh, drops of nitric acid on them, and the leather's pretty eaten up. It didn't make it through to my skin. And, uh, boy, I'm glad I was not either wearing nitro gloves or not wearing any gloves, because uh, I knew some of the acid would come out of those flooded joints when I tried to disassemble this apparatus, and I needed to have some kind of protection on my hands. So the leather worked pretty good. It didn't burst into flames and it didn't soak through to my skin. I think what I will do is take these gloves once I'm once I'm done with everything here and uh, soak them in uh, 
soak the, soak them in this uh, solution of uh, baking soda here to neutralize the acid on it so it doesn't keep eating away at them. But I'm not quite done yet. So I'm going to use them a little while longer. You know, everything's sitting in here soaking in the uh, baking soda bath. There's a lot of fizzing, let me tell you, as I put some of this stuff in. All the joints were loaded with acid. So, yeah. And then uh, the boiling flask is still cooling down. I'm going to let it cool down a little more, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to take apart the uh, the oil bath. Last time, it took about four hours to dissolve that slug of uh, sodium bisulfate down there at room temperature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait until there's no chance of a steam explosion, and I'm going to dump some water in there and then turn the hot plate back on and see if heat will dissolve it a lot quicker. I'll bet it will. Actually, I, I heard about a strange different way to make nitric acid now that I've got a bunch of sodium bisulfate. Um, apparently, you can add more nitrate salt to the bisulfate and heat it up and distill off more nitric acid, but you have to do it at the temperature, at the melting point of the bisulfate salt. Which, you know, as if this, as if this uh, procedure wasn't dangerous enough already, so I don't think I'll try that that process anytime soon. Oh, speaking of the oil bath, I need to keep reminding myself not to fill that too full because um, the, the oil expands when it heats up and takes up more volume. And, and when I was running, it was right up to the rim of the pot here. And actually a few drops ran over onto the heating element of the hot plate and smoked up the place a little bit. So I, I shouldn't fill it up quite so high in the future. Note to self. The oil's going to expand. Don't fill it up so high. And then uh, here's my here's my product. Okay, it must have been wishful thinking on my part. I was thinking I was getting a lot more acid than last time. Last time I got just under 100 milliliters. This time I got just over 100 milliliters. So not much difference. Maybe it's just because I let it run a little longer that I got a little more. So I'm going to do the same as last time. I'm going to calculate the amount of distilled water I need to add to it to uh, dilute it to the 68% uh, azeotrope, approximately. Uh, I'm going to assume, like last time, that it's about 90% strong, although it's probably a little stronger than that, and uh, add enough water to it to make the azeotrope and then uh, add it to my nitric acid bottle. So this is just my second run. I still got quite a bit left from the first run. So this is good. I'm accumulating nitric acid because I'm going to need it. I've got a project in mind that's going to require probably a fair amount of nitric acid to, to accomplish. So I'm accumulating it a little bit at a time. And it's not costing me anything except a few Keck clips. Alright, thanks for watching.